yeah, let's just kick this off. This will be the first time that I've ever done this uh, with someone here. Uh, we did an extensive background check before I let you into the shed quarters. Yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my guest today is Ryan Hager. Uh, thank you so much for joining the show, man. Man, thanks for having me out here in Sheddy Vetter. I'm glad yeah. to be here. It's great. <laughs> awesome. Can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be right now. Especially not right now. No. Because uh, this is air conditioned. It is. So it's it good. feels good. <laughs> uh, Ryan's got a brand new album out, Treading Water, uh, that he just recorded. And you went to... Norman, Oklahoma, to do the majority of this at Bell Labs. I did, yeah. Recording? Bell Labs with Trent Bell, and uh, Trent and I became friends almost a decade ago when I recorded with the band uh, Radio Republic. Oh yeah, we cut that album there, and it turned out killer. And uh, we went in, we had no preconceived notion of what, because we were referred to Trent by Mike McClure. Oh, cool. Yeah, and so uh, when we went in, and we just kind of hit it off of Trent, and then when we got the finished product, we we're like, well. So this is how it's, it's supposed to sound, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, and I, you know, I'd always, uh, threatened to go back <laughs> and, and so I did, so I did. You keep your threats. Yeah, I did. I, it was a, good. yeah, I made good on it. So, uh, yeah, I went back and recorded it up there and, uh, it just, it turned out killer and it was a really good time cause he and I had, you know, become, you know, friends. Cool. It was just nice going back and kind of having a reunion and getting it getting it done yeah and having a and having a good relationship with your producer is everything yeah because you can really communicate with them and not worry about w what you're saying right it's a it's a lot better whenever you can flow a conversation so you use studios from the area the musicians yeah yeah you, yeah uh, musicians yeah. from out there i did uh, uh, did you know any of them before you went in or no this all i knew of i knew of a few of them okay and uh it was just uh at the time obviously there was no uh, quarantine or you know yeah. shutdown going on so i was lucky that they weren't out on the road they're actually at home and they were able to come in and track on some of this stuff so uh i think between there was a bunch of guys that played on it but between all of them i think there were two or three grammys oh so, wow yeah so it was uh this pretty good star study company cast. Yeah, yeah pretty good company and one of the guys um and then he, he may not even want me to say, and I won't even use his, tell, say his name, which guy it was, but he had Elton John's phone number in his cell phone. You got to tell me who that is. Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you off that's, camera. But that's he, awesome, yeah. man. Let's just call him. <laughs> Let's see what he's doing. Just <laughs> yeah. send him a picture of a candle in the wind. On. Come on, do something. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So that's amazing. So you got to work with a star-studded cast on the album. Whenever you went in, did you have every tune ready to go? What, did you have to uh, change things out, or was it already there? You just no, I had the, some tracks? No, I uh, – so we uh, – Trent and I did pre-production remotely. Yeah. So I just sent him acoustic tracks with vocals on it uh, two or three months before we even started on it, which really isn't that much time to get prepared. But, uh, yeah, so I sent all seven songs to him. And we just kind of shared notes. And yeah. then when we got in there, they pretty much stick to the same song structure. And we just built the songs musician by musician. The reason it's pretty cool to know that you're working on a project like this, because I have been honored to be able to play with you. And so have other musicians, because you've done a variety of styles throughout the years. Uh, when I met you, we did Dempsey. Shout out to Dempsey. We did Dempsey together, but before that, you were already doing something a little harder. Yeah. Then you did Dempsey, and then you were into Radio Republic, mm -hmm. um, and then you did Throttle Body, which you'd still do now. Yeah. So how was the transition from rocking and rolling to an acoustic guitar for you? Well, so I started out playing acoustic guitar. So my guitar teacher was Leon Gibbs at Sam Gibbs Music. So uh. I started when I was eight with him, playing you know standards with him. Yeah. So like my the original kind of we did like a uh, senior citizen circuit so okay we would play the Petrolia senior citizens and the henrietta senior citizens you know okay. center and j you know and it is was, this when you were younger or is i this... was eight like oh, eight wow. nine and ten yeah okay yeah so we i did that and it was you know they loved how they didn't care what i sounded like you know it's just, so you're they, okay yeah, man. <laughs> i mean that, who knows if they could even hear it you know but <laughs> but no and that's that's kind of how i you know kind of cut my teeth doing that and then when i started you know getting into my teens and more angsty then i started you know listening to metal and that's yeah. when i you know and uh what turned you on at first 
Uh, like the first thing that made you say, man, I'm going to pick up an electric. Let's do this. Man, I think, uh, well, it was just, I think, so it didn't, it didn't go full, you know, I was pretty much primarily listening to country music because that's what my mom and dad listened to. Yeah. My dad was way into Grand Funk Railroad and, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. I mean, good rock and roll. But uh, I, I didn't get into that because it was his, you know, it's my dad's thing. Yeah. And uh, so I think the first couple, you know, uh, cassettes and maybe some CDs I got. I got uh, <laughs> Hootie and the Blowfish Cracked Rear View. Rock and roll. Yeah. And then I uh, <laughs> the Wallflowers. Um, These are all like 90s, mid-90s yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 And Big, so that's what kind of turned me on. to. Rock was still very much you know, in popular music at was. that time. Yeah, it was. And uh, where I lived, we could pick up 94.5, uh, The Edge, out of oh, Dallas. The Edge. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I talked my mom into taking me to Edge Fest in 97. <laughs> like me and two, but was so, that the year Toadies were there? No, I don't know how I know that. No, I think so. It was either ninety six or ninety seven, yeah. and if anyone's listening and cares, you can fact check this or anyone watches. <laughs> but uh, it was um, in excess. Beck was torn on the Odele album, so he still wow. had his horn section and was like, you know, he was still dancing. doing the dancing yeah. on stage. Yeah, it was great. And uh, Matchbox Twenty, killer. This and, is cool, man. Yeah, it was a good. It was really fun. And uh, who else? There was a band called Cowboy Mouth. I remember Cowboy Mouth. Yeah, they pl they played, and uh, their their actually their vocalist was their drummer. Yeah. So yeah, they came then, to a college station around that time, and I'd seen them. Uh, they uh, were intense. Yeah, man. they were pretty good, yeah, man. They were yeah. crazy. Uh, and who else? Ben Folds Five played that. What? That's yeah. crazy. The original yeah. lineup for the Three Dudes. Oh, yeah, it was that's great. amazing. Yeah, because they were touring on uh, whatever and ever, whatever and ever, amen yeah. around there. Yeah, that's really killer. So that was kind of my introduction into like pop rock. Yeah. Right. It's my cousin uh, gave me Metallica's Black album. That'll do it, man. And, yeah, and then uh, and then I got a hold of like some. He liked Primus as well. Wow. So, so you're working with some of the guys around town. You did uh, did you do the uh, VFW routes? A lot of bands were doing that. Yeah, yeah. So first getting started. the guys I was in a band with were kind of the. They kind of blazed that trail, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that band. Uh, just a quick history. I didn't just start in like a good band. I was in really terrible bands. <laughs> so I mean, I think we all. I mean, can you? Oh yeah. man, my, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was in a high school band, uh, and then right out of that, I kind of got into a real band. That's when I tried out for. Uh, you and I both played with Mike Hardison, the drummer who's in Throttle Body now. Yes. And it was his band, Headthorn, that I tried out for oh, and yeah. got that gig. So, cool. Yeah. yeah, and that's when y'all started playing together. That was yeah, and I was eighteen then. How old so, were you when we started playing together? What because year was it? I man, oh seven. It was a while, but yeah, I'd say around then. So to over ten. So I was like twenty. Twenty something. Yeah. Six. 20, yeah. It's funny because like I remember Mike calling me and saying uh, we want to start a band, and he told me the lineup, and I was like, man, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Um. And then I remember telling him, I'm pretty difficult to work with. And he goes, oh, great. So am I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it worked out perfectly. Yeah. And I think both of you may still be kind of difficult to oh, work yeah. with. But not at, it's not the same now. Though. I think the yeah. reason why it was difficult for us to work is because we were very, uh, we had a lot of opinions on where music should go. Mm -hmm. And he, he definitely, and I never worked with a drummer that had opinions on where the song should go. And that was weird. But it was also... Like, I took it in. I knew he was going to be that yeah. way. And to be honest with you, I, don't, I think me and him both realized we loved working with people that liked that. Just other people didn't like it because right. they took it personally. Or sure. whenever you said, like, oh, I can't, I really want to try to spice that up or that's not really working or what about this? There was no egos involved because I knew that's how he worked. And right. he, he warned me, and that was probably the best thing about and he's it. And he's such a good composer. Yeah. That, you know, you just... It, it's you know, weird from a drummer. You usually don't see yeah. uh, that many drummers with that much input. Sure. And I remember, like, I wouldn't make it to a practice, and I'd come back and be like, we totally changed all the songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd come up with ideas. We've but, got notes for you. Yeah, so I'd have to catch up. And it was yeah. it was great, though. It was a good learning experience. To Throttle Body, band that you're playing with now, cool driving rock and roll through and through. And out of that, because you just released... Your album with Throttle Body, what, yeah. like not even a year ago, right? No, yeah. What, what was this, uh, Man, late, I, late of 2019? At, yeah. Probably yeah, late it was of, late last year. Yeah, and now, yeah. in a, like less less than a year later, you're already releasing Treading Water. So, well, let's talk a little bit about that. You said you had some influences in country music to start off with. 
So that was a good backbone in what you were doing. Sure. This style that you're doing right now is a little diverse in a Southern kind of with a Southern attitude, I would say. So who were some of your influences whenever you were going into this album that kind of helped you figure out what you wanted to do with some of this? Man, I really think not country, but like I've all, you know, I've always just worshiped Tom Petty. Oh, yeah. So like, you know, some of my first influences were like in country that were popular at the time were, I don't even know what you'd, it's just pop country, like Sammy Kershaw, yeah. and, you know, and just stuff like that, that, you know, that I don't think get enough, I mean, they probably do get enough credit, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, nobody's talking, and then like a ton of Garth Brooks, but I, I don't sound like that. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, it's just, it, it's good. And like, my mom used to blare Diamond Rio and- Diamond Rio. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. like Little Texas and- Little Texas? Know, yeah. Uh, these are all the back, they'd be in the back of your mind when you're riding. Yeah, they absolutely. might not be right there in the front, so that you're trying to emulate what they're doing. Sure, but uh, but I know exactly what yeah. you're talking. Yeah, about. it's just kind of a it's just kind of that you know foundation. When I listened to this album, I noticed your title track "Treading Water" sounded so much like Eleven Hundred Springs. It had a fun vibe. It it was very honky tonk. Yeah. I don't know, and then it's funny because you immediately take them for a turn in the second song. But uh, do, do you do you listen to some Eleven Hundred Springs? Did you yeah. just kind of know that that was a style that you were going to go yeah, into? Yeah, absolutely. That one? Yeah, I love I love Matt, and, and I'll, I've always liked Eleven Hundred Springs. And we actually in Radio Republic we played a, played a couple shows wow. with Eleven Hundred Springs. Not that that has anything to do with their influence on me, but yeah, I love that type of music. And you know, and asleep at the wheel. And um, the second tune, I'll talk about that one. Lucky ones. That one has more of a soulful sound. You're remembering on good old times. Yeah. And it's got a great vibe to it. Uh, how, when did you start coming up with that kind of vibe? How did you know that I, that'll be acceptable for this? That song, so that was the first song I finished out of this set of songs, which was like maybe three years ago, right? I finished that, that song. And it always kind of just had this, uh, bouncy but flow it kind of had a good flow to it yeah. um yeah so when uh yeah when i was going to record it i almost didn't you know i almost didn't yeah do that song i can understand because it's just a little bit yeah it's a little bit different so you think maybe it's not going to fit with what's going on I right mean, yeah but i think it fits it finds its place on the yeah you know. maybe and it's it's cool because it's a little bit of a turn but maybe it's the accompaniment of the musicians that you were playing with. Yeah. And it really helped kind of solidify all of it together. Sure. So if you get a chance, check out number two. But not before checking out number one. Because number one, uh, I don't know why. It's cool to hear them both back to back. Because yeah. it's kind of a... And they're honestly, both of those songs are different than yeah. the others, you know. Than the other tunes. Yeah. I mean, this is like, this is a album of songs. It's not like a, you know, it's not a... Cohesive yeah, one thing. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, it is, but it's not, you know, it's so... You kind of get a different thing with every song, which I'm proud of. But yeah, uh, yeah but I think Tread and Water kind of sets the tone for the album. Yeah. You know, because it is kind of playful and, you know. Definitely. Yeah. I, so. I dug Dust. And the reason why I liked it was because, and I could be wrong and I hate it if I'm wrong, but uh, it reminded me of how you write, which is you write riffs sometimes. Yeah. And so that riff, I really dig the riff in it. Cool. Thanks. And it really is the lead and, and kind of the center piece of the song. Um, so did you, whenever you're writing into the music, whenever you're writing this style of music, mm -hmm. do you just say to yourself, oh, I'm still going to do riffs? No. It, well, no. So it's a I got asked the same question this morning by a friend and he asked, uh, you know, what's your approach? And now I either, for Throttle Body, it's the same way. I either have what I think is a good idea for lyrical content and I build off of that and I kind of work around the vibe I want mm -hmm. or uh, I'll have what I think is a good melody and I'll build off of that before I even pick up a guitar, Okay, you know, and that way, uh, and I have a good friend, Eb Stewart, who kind of pushed me in this, in this direction. Like I'm not that great of a good, of a guitar player. So if I have an idea in my head, my playing has to rise to, my idea yeah rather than you know dumbing my idea down for my to my ability makes you know? sense so i mean that's kind of where yeah where that one came through now the funny part about this is you had been showing me some oh god i'm sorry that song because you said the way i used to write that dust is in 13 8 like 13 8 time signature 
It's a str- It's a weird. Still making up words. Yeah, that, that's that not really makes. You used to know whenever you, whenever we used to be in a band together. I always talk about this. How much y'all knew about timing, and I still don't. And it's well, really irrelevant. It's like, does it feel good? <laughs> you know, it that would be matter. what you'd always yeah. say because you would say like, "That's not. That's not in." You know, I don't four, know four four, yeah. four. Yeah. and I would be like. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand that stuff. I just know. And I think one time you told me, well, that song's in seven eighths or something, something like yeah. that, where I was like, oh, okay. I don't know what that yeah, means either. So yeah. It doesn't matter to yeah. me. I just know that it sounds cool when I play it. But um, that's really awesome, man. Um, I do want to say that you have been sh- kind of unraveling the album to me slowly but surely. We've got to go to your work, uh, Rambling Company. That's in downtown Wichita Falls if you get a chance. Um, and you would slowly kind of show me the album. And one of the songs you showed me, which I I couldn't wait to get to when I listened to this because I wanted to hear the final version, is Horn Section. Mm. This is the fun uh, tune on on the album. I, you know, what's funny is I, I went to, I think it was last summer, I went to Mexico for the first time on, on, a, on a cruise. And whenever you showed me this, all I could think about is me being in Mexico. It really did kind <laughs> yeah. of sell it, like it, the whole song. It was funny because I, when I was there, I would uh, I took my cell phone out and I just press record when I'd hear these people playing horns. I just thought it sounded so good, and I wanted to do something with that style, so I just kept recording it. And whenever I, you showed me the final version, I was like, "Dude, it sounds like I'm there again." Yeah. It was really cool. So, yeah. I, <laughs> I know this is a funny tongue-in-cheek song. What are you just? How did you come up with the tune? What Man, made you want to write it? So I was listening to, uh, and I think it was the album Banquet, but Max, I was listening to Max Stallings' Banquet oh, album. Oh, cool, yeah. And I can't, I don't remember what song, but. It just inspired you. There like, was I a love song, no, I said it to, uh, my. I was with Taylor Labrum okay. at the time, and uh, we were listening to it, and I was like, Shh, excuse me, Max, but your horn section is, you know, I said <laughs> it, and I was like, <laughs> and so I wrote it, I, I was like, wait, hold, I'll hold on, so I, let, I had to let him finish what he was doing, and I went and penciled the whole song, Yes, and re- yeah, so. Max uh, Stalling is another one of those guys that when he starts singing, you just have to shut up and listen, yeah. it's one of those things oh, where you just, great. yeah. He's never written a bad song. I said the same thing, not but a couple yeah. weeks ago. I, I'd never heard a bad Max Stalling song. No, there's no such thing. Solid, solid lyrics. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're going for, and they're just amazing. But yeah. um, was it the one where he gets drunk in Mexico and, and declares, I'm drunk? I can't Because do you have anything to declare? And, uh, <laughs> no, I, can't, I, don't, I don't remember the song. I'll have to go back and listen, and I know it'll spark the same. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same uh, reaction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, uh, yeah, we've been sitting here talking with uh, Ryan Hager about his brand new album, Treading Water. You can grab that at Spotify right now. Yeah, iTunes. It's on. Every, it's it's everywhere. Everywhere. Before yeah. I take off, I want to just say uh, that or ask you, who are you playing with right now? Whenever we start going live with everything, who's going to be on your lineup? So the band, man, and I got. So what I did just to. Uh, so when I recorded the album, I used all these studio musicians, and part of my intention was is to use this album as bait yeah. to get, you Here know, you good go. guys. Yeah. Do you want to play? The, you want to play some of this play stuff? Some of that, <laughs> yeah. Baby. So uh, I got um, Taylor. I approached first, and he 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 kind of he hung in there with us for a little bit, but he plays with Clint Vines in the hard, in the hard times. So they were they were busy at the time, and and uh, so Taylor. We I was just like, man, just you know, do your thing. So, it it worked out that I had, had reconnected with uh, Joe Cortez, who played with Johnny Cooper, played Amazing with drummer. yeah, he played with Bart Crow, and uh, also uh, I'm forgetting one, Blue Edmondson. And so he was ready to kind of start doing something again. So I conned him into playing with me, and uh, then also uh, Chris Booth is playing bass. And he played with um, Cody Shaw and the Rhythm Boys, yeah. and uh, he's played with a ton, a ton of good musicians too. I, I mean, if I started listing these guys' resume, it, I mean, we'd be here for a while. Yeah, but that backbeat is solid already. Man, that's yeah. a crazy yeah, solid backbeat. It's they're a killer rhythm section, and they had never played together before, and it's it's pretty special. And then uh, I, th- my guitar player is, ama- is he's amazing. His name is Coleman Hall. And I think this is only like the second or third project he's been in, and uh, but man, he's just he's like a Mark Knopfler type player. Just wow. plays to the so- you know plays to the song and can like nail any part you you know you show him, and uh, he's just a killer. 
guitar player. And then uh, I've got a, a lap steel player. His name's Ross Harrison. We've known each other, you know, for forever. And I was told through a mutual friend, they're like, you know, Ross is a good lap steel player. No, he's not. <laughs> I never, I, I didn't know, know he, guy. I didn't know he played. <laughs> and so, uh, what, um, man, what, what wound up happening, it was uh, just divine intervention. The day I contacted Chris and I invited him to the Wichita Falls Brewery, and I propositioned him about playing in this band. I, I shit you not, five minutes into our conversation, Ross comes up and sits down on my left. And I looked and I did a double take and I was like, uh, I, I think I'm supposed to ask you if you want to play lap steel. <laughs> Do you have time? He's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all he that's took? It. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. that's crazy cool. Yeah. Guys are struggling out there. Years yeah. to create a band. That's yeah. good, man. I'm so happy for you. I'm glad that you got the band together. Uh, whenever all this gets back to normal, hopefully we can make it to a show, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys live. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, and I just uh, I just got all my online stuff. Man, that stuff drives me nuts. But Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, if, anybody, if anybody's bored enough... Uh, on ryanhagermusic.com cool and uh, all the links and everything all the links will be there please go check out his music it's brand new on Spotify right now uh, Treading Water that's what you're looking for for Ryan Hager uh, man thank you so much for joining me in the thanks studio for, thanks for having me man this has been a pleasure yeah so, cool thanks for yeah. joining the uh, shed quarters yeah the the uh what is it uh the... shedward norton shed... <laughs> shedward, norton. <laughs> shedward james omos yeah. uh we're before we leave we're gonna go ahead and do a live performance with ryan hager right here in uh the studio so thanks again for joining us man yeah no problem Was a cafe on the corner where they used to meet Always seemed crowded but we'd find a seat Chat over coffee in the smoke-filled air I never said much but they didn't seem to care Flip a coin to see who was gonna pay Do the same thing that very next day Never got a hold, I don't think it could was the company that made that coffee taste so good Miss those days when we just hang around And I miss that sleepy town We were the lucky ones Hey, the lucky ones On the back porch, passing that bottle around. Steel belts that hum towards the north of town. We'd blow them smoke rings when it got too late. Slow flow of traffic, seal our fate. We just talk about how we wouldn't hang around. This wasn't our kind of town. We Lucky ones. Hey, lucky ones. Like lightning bugs drift down towards the moon. Highway take us way too soon. We come back every now and then. It's good to see the faces of our friends. We've been thinking we might just hang around the Truth is, we don't deserve this time